When considering the ultimate life form, some consider it as an immortal being while others an omnipresent entity. But in the universe where history was written by the horny, in which there are an abundance of historical figures, there is only the one true primordial entity that stands on the top of the upper echelons. A vampire lolly. Returning back to the world of Figmas, it's good to be back as not only is the texture superb, I mean plastic texture, but also retains the fantastic anime, oh, I'm sorry, visual novel, accurate sculpt rendered into plastic form that surely establishes Figma as the best line regarding 2D related characters. This is all shown starting off with the head where Arquid's beautiful short hair cut is accurately depicted with the yellow paint job alongside the separating lines inscribed onto the skull not to mention the two hair strands that are sticking up that highlights Arquid's youth regarding looks like beauty and pulls off the kawaii energy. This is not mentioning the face which this time around possesses the characteristics of a being that oozes true beauty. Or it's probably the fact that I have a type. Portrayed through the enormous blood red anime eyes that not only reflect Arquid's soul of a naive anime girl, but also reflects her vampiric nature that feeds off all living beings regardless of who they are, as she can suck off that sounded wrong. Miners, devils, and even cyborgs. Arquid's beauty is also attributed to the sharp nose and the ever more sharper chin and cheeks that perfectly portrays the fact that Arquid is maintaining her health with a strict diet and even more strict exercise routine. Personal lifestyles aside, the fox-like cheeks are a true highlight and reminds me of another feminine figure that I have a great fondness for. Damn, I have a type. But if you're not content with the confident grinning face, there is this cross-blushing face that wit, the crossed eyebrows, the slight kawaii blush, and the frowning mouth that makes you want to just poke fun of our beloved vampire. Aren't you a good girl? Aren't you a good girl? Oh. And if you want to portray Arquid in her true vampiric glory, there is this battle-ready face. And such face is a true force of nature, as the pupils have lost their blood-red hue and their place with its yellow Sith-like eyes, and the open mouth. That perfectly portrays the fact that Arquid is a true vampire and a force that even the Emperor is at the mercy of. But if you've pre-ordered Arquid from the Good Smile store, you get this smiling face that perfectly depicts Arquid's cheerful nature, especially with the closed, smile-shaped eyes and again an open mouth. A face that is an embodiment of kawaii that's not only a good for your mental health, that makes me further fall into Arquid's happy-go-nature and the perfect face when going on a date. But such delights don't end here as Arquid's neck also stands at the longer end, which with its skinny and long nature aids in further highlighting Arquid's beauty, and with the yellow head reminds me of another primordial entity. And moving down to the torso, Arquid, while being the supreme primordial entity, seems to be either simple or humble regarding a drip, as it consists of a singular white top with a dark blue miniskirt. And the white top, while simple, is well defined with the various wrinkles embedded onto the pale white paint job that adds to the shirt's authenticity. And while I pointed out my disdain for the implementation of a ratchet joint on the waist, such is not the case for Arkwood, as the simple white shirt makes it more organic compared to actually placing such joint on a six pack, as it ruins the aesthetics of the six pack while on clothing just looks like another wrinkle. The silver necklace on the top of the torso is beautiful painted, but I don't know exactly what it does. Damn, just released an English translation already. And... Ho ho! Arqua seems to be packing some ballistics. Hey, if even a half cyborg like Vader can be redeemed, I can fix her. And a navy colored miniskirt is the finishing touch to Arquid's drip as not only does it highlight her long legs, but also helps in attracting the attention of many eyes. <laughs> God damn you all to hell! 
Looking down, as explained before, Arkwood possesses some long legs that are perfect in reenacting the Zaku kick. Like Lane Facade, they are pretty well sculpted with the black leggings being organically implemented with them even being tucked inside the brown leather-like boots. And the boots also retain the high standard of details found on the rest of the body as the wrinkles aid in the clothing's authenticity. This is not talking about Arkwood's small feet that, while I love these boot designs, I'm definitely spoiled by the Godzilla legs. Another factor that further fuels my fondness for the Figma line is that rather than the lackluster amount, or none at all, accessories found in particular figure lines, Figma, even at the lowest, knows to rev up their core customers with a decent assortment of accessories, and Arkwood is no exception. Take in mind that I bought the DX edition that comes with the extra accessories, so I can't stand up for the standard edition. Besides the faces previously mentioned, there are those hands. Starting off with the out of the box open hands, there are your fists for kawaii moments. Please help me. Holding hands, not that she needs to hold anything to defend herself. Scratching hands that are used when Arkwood is engaged in combat. Pointy scratching hands for the same purpose but with attitude and a pair of posing hands for a Jojo pose. You also get an additional headpiece, but this time it possesses a pair of cat ears. That I don't know the exact details behind them, but it is Kawaii! But having a closer look at the ears, they seem extremely akin to the hair, and seems too organic for a fake pair. Wait, is this a real pair? Then there's this attack effect piece that is composed of a translucent plastic but it's imbued with a violet color hue with a mixture of a white hue at the center. It perfectly portrays when Arkwood is attacking either opposing hostiles or acting like a real world predator. But do you remember the cardboard that came within the package? Seriously though, did, did we really need this? Because after ripping it open, was I able to discover this blood pool sheet? So. Don't just throw the cardboard in the rubbish bin. But looking at the effect piece, it is colored with a dark blood red color scheme with a pint of a deep orange at the center, alongside the splatter pattern resembling when a good old Brit shed several pints of blood. Down have a couple points with the lads. And placing Arquid above brings out the gothic horror vibes if you find yourself at the opposing side of this beloved vampire. But if you're not a fan of miniskirts or prefer cloth over plastic, there is this alternative form. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. And here you have Arkwood Brunstad in her more mature and conservative God damn you all to hell! That is, more or less there in case your loved ones enter your rooms without your permission as a type of guarantee. Social norms aside, the cloth is of high quality as the feel of it is even better than that of Mando's, where the bendy wire installed can be reshaped for any pose that the wheel desires. But the skirt isn't the only change as the lower half of the legs have forsaken their goth-like boots for a pair of high heels that are beautifully sculpted with a gloss-filled black paint job that adds an additional layer of maturity to the current trip. But as the lolicon I am, I prefer the original. Now, as well Arkwood Brunstad may be, if not, the most powerful primordial entity in the Nasuverse, she still does possess a humanoid form which unless you're a shape-shifting entity, limits the height to which she can grow. But hey, I'm not complaining. But nonetheless, Arkwood still stands pretty tall for a female anime character standing at 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches tall. Here's Arkwood Brunstad next to ChatGPT, rare and well done, fellow fake characters, Shame! and a big G. Now, if you're more familiar with the kaiju figures, posability was limited which does hinder the kaijus from conducting certain poses, but considering the source material, it's pretty screen accurate. In doing so, posability found in human characters are far superior with the likes of the figure arts line being on top compared to the kaiju roster, but even such humans are limited when compared to 2D counterparts. And no, I'm not talking about on-screen depiction, as Arkwood Brunstad outmaneuvers even the Dark Lord 
hold of the Sith himself, and I expect nothing less from a Figma figure. The head can freely move up and down, side to side. Shoulder movement is limited due to lack of butterfly joints. The arm skull kind of limits its movement, but still more poseable than a Jedi or Sith Lords. Elbow movement is limited to 90 degrees. Peace and hand movement. Upper torso movement is extremely flexible as it can move up and down, left and right. Abdomen movement is hardly there. Why the hell did even Figma put it there? Leg split, thanks to the skirt being composed of solid plastic, is superb. Just the alternative form and the transformation may have made the lower parts easily fall off. The double side joints allow the knees to bend over 90 degrees. Feet movement is extremely flexible, as it can move up and down, side to side and a toe bend. So regarding articulation, don't mess with this girl. So, to sum up, Figma's iteration of Arcoid Brune Stud is a fantastic release as Figma once again and succeeded in capturing her 2D likeness into the 3D plastic landscape as portrayed through the beautiful skull, the clean paint job, and a diverse posability. Not to mention the various assortment of accessories covered by the DX edition that aid in recreating our beloved true vampire in various forms. The only downside is that due to the transformation in which alternative pieces are placed instead has weakened the stability of the overall figure. But such faults cannot cover the highs this figure reaches in which if you're a type moon or fate fan, I would highly recommend this figure. In doing so, I'm going to give Figma's iteration of Arcoid Brunstud a ranking of an A.